In this video, I'm going to show you a few things that you probably didn't even realize about your kitchen cutlery. And beyond that, we're going to cut some food. So, keep watching. Hey everybody, this is Dale with Delano's Edge Professional Blade Sharpening. I'm out here in the shop today. I just want to change it up. Uh, instead of being at my desk in the office, I like being out in the shop. I want to start off by talking about the way things used to be, long before any of us were ever here, certainly myself. You know, a, a long time ago, there were peddlers. Um, I think they were called peddlers. But, um, you know, there didn't used to be subdivisions and all that. All the homes were scattered across the countryside, and, and um, typically the men would be off doing whatever work they needed to do, and the women would be at home taking care of all the things around the house. Grocery stores and things like that, uh, certainly Walmarts, any kind of department stores and all, none of that stuff was really all that close. It was more of a job to be able to do something like that and go pick up whatever you needed. People would go around with um, like covered wagons and things like that and, and they'd go from homestead to homestead. Inside of his covered wagon he'd have cast iron skillets and pots and pans, you know, all the different things you'd need, kitchen knives, and if you didn't want to buy any of the kitchen knives that he had for sale, he would also have a sharpening stone, big wheel, and you may have seen old pictures of things like this. Uh, you know, they'd sit out there and pedal it, the stone would turn, sometimes they'd have a big contraption where it would go down in water, come back up, that way the stone stays wet, and they'd sharpen your knives up and give it back to you. Uh, times have certainly changed. It's not like that now. You can go anywhere and get anything you want and drop off a hat. Of course, there's Amazon. You ain't even got to leave home. Nowadays, everything is so much of a disposable, throw-it-away type of society. Um, but it's not like that with kitchen cutlery, um, or, well, any kind of knives for that matter. Now, there are certainly cheaper knives. There's cheap steels, cheap handles, you know, all that kind of stuff. Now, these right here, if something was going to be disposable, I guess this kind of thing, I would say, could be disposable if you wanted to put it in that category. Um, but really, it's, this isn't disposable either. These are typically meant more for restaurants, people that are going to be using them and passing it on to the next person and they're using it. Nobody's really taking care of things the way it should be taken care of. You know, it's in a lot of different people's hands. But ultimately, a knife is meant to be sharpened and sharpened and sharpened. And nowadays, it's not uncommon for somebody to buy a knife. It's somewhat sharp when you buy it. They'll use it till it's dull and then they'll just suffer with it for, you know, a few years or whatever. And then they'll chunk it and get them something else. That's not the way it works. It's automatically known that knives are going to get dull, but then you sharpen it again. And then they last for years and years and years and years. What is a good brand of knife, though? There's a lot of good brands out there. There's Wustoff, Henkels, uh, Shuns, Global. Global is a good brand as well. A lot of good things. But even within the brands, uh, there are, okay, Henkels, for example. You've got, just in that brand, if somebody says, hey, that's a good brand to get, don't just go get it. You'll see cheaper ones in the same brand, and then you'll see a higher end one. And it could be a lot of different things that makes that difference uh, in the uh, cost of it. Um, the steel, what kind of steel is it? That's a huge factor when it comes to buying a knife. Uh, today, there's all kinds of super steels out there. Used to, the most common thing was 1095 high carbon steel. Um, this one, this is 1095 high carbon steel. The, the only bad thing about them though is that they rust easy. So, you know, you have to wash it and then dry it off right then. If you just washed it and let it sit, you know, have water on it, it rust up. So you had to wash it and dry it. This one, now you see this is the exact same knife. Uh, the only difference is this one's really shiny. And this one, well, I've intentionally made this one dark. Uh, I just put mustard on it. But um, the acid in the mustard, mustard interacts with it. But this knife has a lot of uh, stainless steel in it. And that makes it to where, you know, it can withstand rusting a lot easier. Uh, but, you know, now this this has a lot of stainless steel in it, um, but it's cheap steel. It's, um, actually I'm not even sure exactly what kind of steel this is, but it gets dull very quick, you know, 
be sure that you're looking for a good steel. There's L Max is probably the best kind of super steel that there is out right now. I'd have to say next to L Max is probably going to be uh, VG10. Um, then below that, I would say 1095 high carbon steel. Even though that's what they used to use a long time ago, I love 1095 high carbon steel. Um, yeah, you gotta you gotta tend to it more, but it holds a great edge. Then the next thing you want to look for when it comes to buying a knife is the handle. Um, you know, me personally, I would say a knife is not something you want to buy online. You can if you already know good and well what you're wanting, then yeah, you know, that's fine. But if you're going to buy it on Amazon or something, definitely go somewhere where you can get your hand on the knife first. You know, if somebody tells you about this really high-end shun knife, um, you know, just something with a crazy price tag on it or whatever, don't think that that's the best thing since peanut butter and order it. Then you get it home and realize it feels weird in your hand, you know, and it just doesn't feel good to you when you're cutting with it. Go somewhere and get your hands on it. If it feels comfortable in your hand, then start going from there and making sure it's got the right steel, you know, everything like that that you want on it. As far as buying a kitchen knife, that's the main thing. You want to make sure it's got good steel and you want to make sure that the handle feels good to you. Doesn't matter what anybody else says. It doesn't matter what the internet says is the five top so and so. You know, that's things to look at and can help guide you in a certain direction. But then beyond that, you've got the best thing since peanut butter in your hand. You've got it home with you. And then after six months or however long for you, depending on your use, it gets dull that's going to happen. It doesn't matter how good of a knife you get, it's going to get dull. That's where I come from. The neighbor is mowing his grass. I have to keep pausing. It's about to drive me crazy. Alright, let me get you on in here. Let's play with some food and uh, talk some more about knives while we're cutting. All right, is that better? Can everybody see? Okay. Now I've got these two knives here. Of course, they're identical. They look the same. They're the same brand, same everything. Um, this one I've recently sharpened. Uh, this one, I haven't sharpened this, I don't know. It may have been a year ago. But I do use all my kitchen knives quite a bit, and these are just two of them. I use these two because they're identical. Um, I want to be able to get the best results I could possibly get on video. Um, but I can I can tell that it's pretty dull. But um, how do you know when it's time to get your knives sharpened? Uh, well, there's several tests that you could do. Uh, well, the first thing is just simply if you're not happy with the way it's performing. If it doesn't feel good to you or you just simply know it ain't cutting the way it used to, well then, you know, hit me up. You know, give me a call. Let me get it sharpened up for you. Now, you can use those uh, machines that everybody has in their kitchens. Those things, those things are awful. Don't use those, uh, you know, like, what are they called? chef's choice or something like that I, i'm not even sure now <clears throat> i think it's chef's choice is a common one but uh yeah all those uh typical kind of sharpeners that you electric ones that you'd find in people's homes those i call steel grinders because they don't actually sharpen they just grind your steel off and they take years of life off of it and not only that they don't really make your knives sharp they just uh, put a micro serration on the edge while they're grinding your steel away uh, they're awful uh, anyway let's see got a piece of paper now that's a good test um, let's see here hoping you can see this now this is the dull one um, okay well it's not even okay I can tear through the paper <laughs> Well, I also wanted to show you, you can tend to find the nicks. I was hoping to cut enough to be able to show.
show you. You can find a nick if you can't really see it well, but you can you know that you feel something when you're cutting. You can cut a piece of paper and you'll feel it grab. Like you can kind of see it grabbing at certain spots. And that's where nicks are. But this is just too dull to really show you that. And actually this one, I, I dropped this one earlier. Um, let's see here. If you can see that. I think there was a nick in the end. Yep, there is. There's a couple of nicks in the end. There's either two or three. I can't even see it with my eye. But, you know, when you're cutting vegetables and all, you can you can feel those things. And, um, you know, they get dull. Doesn't matter how good of a knife it is. It gets dull, get it sharpened. Okay. Now, there is another test you can do. Uh, you can put it on your nail. Well, let me show you with the dull one first. When you put a knife on, on your nail, uh, as you can see, this is just sliding off no matter where I put it. Um, it's a little bit sharper right back in here. But overall, it's dull. It's dull. But if it's good and sharp, as soon as it touches your nail, it grabs it. It doesn't slide off of it. That's a good test. Now, some people will say, you know, shave your arm or something with it. Be careful with that. Um, I have had people, there was actually one guy. Okay, one guy, he tried the arm test, you know, shave some hairs off. And, you know, yeah, that's shaving hair. I'm gonna wipe that off since I am gonna be cutting food. Um, Anyway, he um, he came to pick up his knife, and he said, well, let's just see how sharp it is. And he put it on his hand, and instead of just going straight down, he kind of went this way a little bit as he was coming down. Cut right into his hand. Be careful when you get a freshly sharpened knife. Be very careful. Okay. Let's play with some food. Oh, I... You know, I've, I've wanted to do this. Let, let me just show you this. Bam! Bam! Kablam! You like that? Oh, I couldn't wait to do that. All right. I'm going to cut onion last because I don't want to be sniffling and crying. Let's see. We'll play with a tomato first. All right. Let's see how this does on here. Okay. You see, when I first put it in, how hard it was to go and it cuts okay but I have to push through I had to push through it and it actually pushed down on the tomato some before it actually went in see see how much I have to push on that you shouldn't have to do that let's see what we got with this one. Oh yeah much better now don't judge me, you guys. I am not a chef, and I don't make pretty cuts. But that's how a knife should cut. If you've been sharpening with the same edge for years, which is very common, uh, don't throw your knife away. Bring it somewhere to get sharpened, preferably me. tomatoes are in the way now what I just did is bad that's bad for your edge to slide like that typically it's better to do like that but you know I ain't perfect I'm trying to do that fancy smancy real paper thin cuts I'm no pro oh look at that yes I just ate that no I did not wash my hands I'm a guy. I don't care. It's good for you. you know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna go back to the dull one again. 
with this. Yeah, there's a big difference. I'm having to push through here. You know, that's when it's easier to cut yourself, too, is when you're having to push through vegetables to cut them. Yeah, that's... That's when it's more dangerous. <clears throat> yes, it is very true. A dull knife is a dangerous knife. All right, let me cut this onion here. Get that nasty part off. Still looks nasty in there. Yeah, these are not the best vegetables. I'm not going to say online where I bought them at. Most of you can probably guess. Yeah, that's the way it's supposed to cut. See, a knife is supposed to just move through your vegetables much easier than it does with a, like this with a dull blade. Oh, that's awful. You should not have to cut like that. Do yourselves a favor. <clears throat> Do yourselves a favor and bring it to me. Let me get it sharp for you. There's no need to have dull knives. You won't regret it, I can assure you. Man, this is an ugly onion. I mean, that's just nasty. Wish I had something better to present to y'all today. But, okay, I'm getting hungry. You guys, y'all know what to do. If y'all have a good knife brand out there that y'all really like and want to tell us about it, throw some comments down there. Now, I know that, uh, you know, trying to show y'all a sharp knife in a video, you know, a lot of people have done that. And it's really hard to show somebody how sharp a knife is. You know, you got a paper test, you know, things like that. Um, but uh, ultimately, uh, try it out. If you're, if you're doubting anything, get the junkiest thing that's been hiding in the back of the kitchen drawer somewhere and bring it to me and see you know what cut something with it first and then bring it to me let me sharpen it and uh and then after that you'll know what sharp is all about um that's when you can really tell the difference so um so please give me a um, thumbs up and uh talk to me down below give me your comments your thoughts uh, if there's anything you'd like to see me do on a video or demonstrate or talk about just let me know and uh i gotta throw that nasty stuff away but um yeah give me a thumbs up share it give me your comments y'all have a good day y'all stay sharp take care